along the way, I've got a lot of requests, a lot of inquiries of the Shark Saver Trace I use for droning. So I'm going to show you the Shark Saver Trace, basically what you need. And I'm going to start just by showing you what, what you need. You need a power swivel, two power swivels with two split rings, strong split rings or solid rings. But I prefer to use the solid, the, um, the split rings, uh, the strong split rings and power swivels. A big hook. I use the tuna circle, the 12 volt tuna circle and uh, the steel. Minimum 200 pound. I don't use anything lighter when I'm droning. Um, you can, I have been bitten off uh, on 200 before but minimum 200 pound steel. For my sinker guys, slight sinker, long boom, thick wire, um, a short piece of mono onto one of these quick clips. Also, I take cotton and I wrap my, um, ar uh, my arms with cotton. Why I do that is I want the sinker to sit, I don't want it to trip uh, because out there you've got a lot of strong currents and um, if it trips and it washes out you actually wasted a drop and you know it's these drops battery life with a drone all those are critical things so you want to maximize that also why I use cotton uh, is because you can easily break it if you pull hard enough it breaks it sometimes if you use a cable tie um, the cable tie holds it doesn't trip and you can reel it out but you'll reel that two three four hundred meters you're gonna reel it basically anchoring itself all along and then uh, trust me you don't want to reel the sinker all the way from three four hundred meters with it not trip because your arms are gonna feel it the next day it's actually worse off reeling in your sinker than fighting a fish anyway all right guys so what I've done now there's two parts I've got a power swivel 200 pound for about a meter onto the power swivel and the split ring that's the one part and then the second part split ring power swivel to my hook okay so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna push the swivel through that power swivel uh, through that split ring pull it all the way there so what you got you got this you got this okay all the way to your hook so now the trick is what I do I just bend that up a bit like that right there take a bit of cotton and I just wind it up here with cotton I wind it on the eye of the swivel just there I wind it a couple of times just there maybe about 20 times and I just knot it off So I've got that. And then what I do on the one split ring, I just hook onto my swivel. So you've got that. Just got that. You got your hook. So now what happens? Why I tied it with cotton is because when you drone out there. This is fixed, this is fixed, this goes to your main line, your leader, so that's fixed like that. This can move up and you don't want it to move up, you know, if you get if the currents pushing in or the surge is pushing in too much, it can move up. And if it moves up onto your leader and you get a pull there, you can get bitten off. So you want to keep it down here in the section where you got some steel so that cotton is just there to prevent it from going up in an event if you hook onto a fish there's your hook if you hook onto a fish what's gonna happen you're gonna do this this is what's gonna happen it's gonna break loose 
and you're going to fight your fish, no problem. But in an event, you get cut off. You get cut off. So this part, which is going to your leader and your sinker, is, you get cut off. So the, the fish now can just move all the way, move out. That falls down, stays behind. So you're only left with this piece stuck in the fish's mouth and that piece. So the fish is not swimming around with all that 100, 200 meters of heavy tackle swimming around and the chances of it snagging on rocks and stuff, you know, and hurting the fish any further, there's nothing. So all you got is this. You can also squash your barbs, which will allow the hook to come out easier. But uh, this is much safer than having the whole trace hanging from the shark's mouth. So yes guys, this is the shark saver trace what I use. Cool, hope it helps.